We are going to talk a little bit about chirality in molecules that are used as pharmaceuticals or over-the-counter drugs. The concept of chirality is really important in all aspects of the chemistry that goes on inside of our bio, uh, inside of our body, like biochemistry. So this is going to include drugs and substances that we put inside our body. Many of the pharmaceutical drugs, and this also includes over-the-counter drugs, are chiral molecules, meaning that they have at least one chirality center in the molecule. And remember, when you have a chiral molecule, the, that chiral molecule and its mirror image, they are referred to as enantiomers. So when you have a pharmaceutical that is chiral, it has an enantiomer, its mirror image. And typically when a chemist is synthesizing the, the chiral pharmaceutical drug, typically it is pretty much impossible to synthesize the drug without also synthesizing its enantiomer. So the drug, the desired drug, and its enantiomer are synthesized at the exact same time in like a mixture. And in an ideal situation, when you're making this mixture of a pharmaceutical and its enantiomer, ideally only one of the enantiomers is going to be biologically active, meaning only one of them is going to have some sort of effect on our body and the other enantiomer is just going to be useless to our body and we'll just, we'll just pee it out like it's not going to do anything. In the situation where both of the enantiomers are biologically active, so one of them is a desired drug and the other one is just the mirror image that, that is made along with it in the process, one of the enantiomers might, may be harmful. That's a possibility, like toxic or poisonous. And when that is the case, the enantiomers must be physically separated from each other by the chemist so that the consumer is only taking the good enantiomer and is not taking the toxic or hazardous substance. And I'm going to show you uh, four examples of pharmaceuticals and their enantiomers with different degrees of, um, of severity of the effects of their enantiomer. So the worst, worst example is this drug called thalidomide. Thalidomide was an over-the-counter medication quite a while ago in the 50s. It was originally designed for the treatment of morning sickness in women who were pregnant. Only one of the enantiomers of thalidomide was useful in treating morning sickness. The other enantiomer of thalidomide caused very severe birth defects, which is really unfortunate when you're taking the drug because you're pregnant and have morning sickness. So there was a time period where a lot of children were being born. Um, their mothers had used thalidomide to treat morning sickness, completely unaware of the side effect of the, of the other enantiomer. And the severity of the birth defects, I mean, we're talking like kids were missing limbs, um, just very severe birth, birth defects. Thalidomide is, so here are, here are the two enantiomers of thalidomide, and you can see where the, the chiral carbon is located in the molecule. So thalidomide is a drug that chemists are not even able to isolate the two isomers from each other, the good one from the bad one, because our body actually converts one enantiomer to the other. So even if we isolated the good enantiomer and only provided that drug to pregnant women, our body would turn it into the bad enantiomer, and we would still have um, the possibility of these severe birth defects. Thalidomide is still on the market, but it is not administered at all to women who are or may be pregnant. So it is used with just extreme caution. And like I said, this is, that's a real severe, very extreme case of enantiomers gone wrong. Here's a more, um, more, uh, happy case. So this is, these are the structures of the ibuprofen molecule. You can see there's its chiral carbon right there. 
And ibuprofen has an enantiomer. One enantiomer is just totally um, not harmful to our body. So we can take the mixture of these two drugs. One of them is the good enantiomer and it relieves your pain or your fever or whatever you're taking ibuprofen for. And the other enantiomer doesn't cause any harm. And in fact, much like with the thalidomide situation, our body converts the inactive enantiomer to the good one. So in this case, it's actually, we're, we're taking the useless enantiomer and turning it into a good one, and, and that's, that's happy. Uh, here's another example, naproxen, or Aleve. Here is the chiral carbon in the Aleve or naproxen molecule. Um, and this is the, the good version of the naproxen molecule. The other enantiomer is a liver toxin. And in this case, our body is not able to convert between enantiomers. So we can't turn the bad one into a good one. And therefore, the enantiomers of Aleve must be physically separated before it's bottled up and distributed to consumers. So you're only getting this one particular enantiomer and not a mixture of the two. And last but not least, L-DOPA uh, or levodopa. Here's the chiral carbon right there. This is the L-DOPA molecule. Um, this is a medication that's used to treat Parkinson's disease. Our, our body will convert this L-DOPA molecule into dopamine, um, which is associated with emotions and movement and uh, Parkinson's disease is associated with decreased dopamine production. So if a person is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, one of the treatments is to provide them with increased dopamine, and that is done by providing them with L-DOPA, which our body then turns into dopamine to make up for the deficiency. There is an enantiomer of L-DOPA, but that enantiomer is not biologically active. Um, so you can take it and it's not going to have any negative effects. The enantiomer won't have any negative effects on you.